Hi, and welcome to the Learn Kubernetes with Google series. My name is Laura, and I'm a software engineer at Google working on managed multi-cluster in GKE. So today I want to show you a really cool usage of MCS, which is application segmentation. So that's kind of a fancy sounding word, but all that I mean is putting parts of your application on one cluster and parts of it on another. Maybe you have one team that's working on part of the application blue team and you give them their own cluster, um, but you have another team, green team, that works on another part of the application, so you give them their own cluster. Uh, maybe some of your workloads need to run on some sort of special hardware, um, but they still need to be able to connect to other workloads and other clusters that don't need that special hardware. Uh, maybe you have one group that hosts some centralized set of services that several different applications use, um, but each of those applications themselves are hosted on their own clusters. And specifically on GKE, another reason might be because some workloads work well on GKE autopilot clusters, which is kind of this fully managed GKE cluster with a simpler pricing model and some security and best practices built in. Um, but other workloads, maybe you need to tune your clusters a little bit more. Um, they need to be a bit more special. So you use GKE standard clusters for those, but you still need other parts of your cluster topology to access work the workloads in there. So in every case here, we have more than one cluster and at least some of the workloads in any given cluster need to contact some of the workloads in some other cluster. So this is exactly the perfect situation for MCS, right? So multiple Kubernetes clusters, they all need to share services with each other. So what I wanna show you today is based on this awesome walkthrough by my friend and coworker, Ali's ID. And it's published on the GCP documentation. And I only have time to show you the high action bits. I already pre-set everything up, but the whole thing is here. If you wanna do it start to finish, uh, you can definitely check it out entirely. So I'm gonna just scroll down to one of these diagrams here. Um, the idea behind this whole walkthrough that's in this um, documentation here is that we start in a world where someone has an application all in one cluster. So that's what's being depicted here. This pink box is the one cluster. It's a cluster in this US West region um, that hosts the entire application. So this application, this demo application has a couple different microservices, but for the purposes of the diagram, you can see it's split into a front end workload, a bunch of different workloads that are just called the middleware stack and a stateful backend workload. So if I keep scrolling down a little bit, you'll see this is the state that we're trying to get to in the end, which is that we have this application split out across three clusters instead. So you can see that the front end workload is deployed to all of them. And to us, it doesn't matter for a client coming in which front end workload they get, which cluster they get. So we'll expose them across the cluster set as a multi-cluster service. The middleware stack here is also deployed everywhere too, but um, this won't be exposed as a multi-cluster service uh, because this way, if somebody's already in, in this cluster or in this cluster, uh, they can just contact the middleware services that are already local to that cluster to uh, reduce any unnecessary inter-region network traffic charges. Um, but for the backend service, uh, how that will be handled in this setup is that uh, it will be in one cluster and then exported across uh, all of those clusters. So any given cluster, wherever a request is, can actually go contact that backend over in, in this case, the US West One uh, cluster. So this is our stateful backend service. Um, it needs to handle all the read writes in sort of one place. Um, and uh, it's also the one that's deployed on this GKE standard um, cluster as opposed to these two that are on GKE autopilot. So maybe uh, the folks who set this up um, wanted this to be on here for some special reason. So one other thing that's added in here, uh, which I mentioned in the last episode briefly, is multi-cluster gateway you can actually see up here. So I didn't get a chance to show it to you last time, but today I can. Uh, multi-cluster gateways are often used in tandem with MCS whenever an application serves external client. So if we wanna be able to route traffic to go to any one of these front end workloads that could be in any of these clusters, uh, we need to configure a load balancer in front of all of the clusters. So normal load balancer type services in Kubernetes only know how to configure this for one cluster at a time. But with the multi-cluster gateway, 
API, you can configure a load balancer that routes traffic to any of these clusters, to any of these backend, these endpoints for the front end workload in whatever way that we want. The whole flow is that an external client hits the load balancer configured by multi-cluster gateway. Uh, that will route that request to any of the front end workloads, could be in any of these clusters. Um, any of the any requests from one of those front end workloads that needs to go to the middleware stack will actually stay local to the cluster, uh, to the middleware microservices that are already in that cluster. Um, but if it needs to contact the stateful cart service, that is exposed from the US West 1 cluster only. Um, so it will use a multi-cluster service to be able to contact that using DNS. So let me show you everything in action. I've already got everything set up according to the recipe. Again, the, everything is down here uh, to set it up yourself. If you want to try it out. Uh, first, I'm going to show you in the uh, Google Cloud uh, console uh, in the workload view. I'm looking at uh, this namespace online boutique where everything is deployed just to show you that there's tons of um, deployments in here. You can see there's stuff in Auto Central, stuff in Auto East, stuff in Standard West. These are the names of my three clusters that this application is segmented across. Um, so there's tons of stuff in here and I want to highlight um, that our cart services, which is literally one called cart service, another one called Redis cart, are only deployed in standard West, right? So that's the only place, if we go back to our picture really quick, that's the stateful backend over here only in our standard US West cluster. So I'm also going to go over to my terminal real quick. because I want to show you the service exports too. So I kind of just have, I'm going to dump a bunch of uh, this in here just because I'm grabbing uh, the service exports for each of my contacts and just kind of putting some, some uh, stuff around here so we can see it. So you can see that as described in the diagram, this cart service is only exported from the standard West cluster. Um, it's only hosted in that one place, but the front end is exported across all the clusters. It's one multi-cluster service um, across all three of our clusters. Okay, and one more thing that I wanna highlight, um, so let me clear this out in the terminal. So I'm going to uh, grab uh, from Auto East, I kind of randomly chose uh, the front end deployment and look at its YAML. And the reason I'm doing this, I got to scroll up a little bit, but this is because uh, we've configured the DNS in such a way so that our middleware services, right, are always going to the cluster local uh, endpoints by only using this cluster local DNS. And we can see this one's the same, this currency service, this one, the recommendation service, the shipping service, checkout service, blah, blah, blah. But this one right here, the cart service, right? Remember that's only in that one cluster. This one is configured to use the cluster set.local zone. So cart service.onlineboutique.svc.cluster set.local. So this is how um, our front ends, regardless of where they are, are going to be able to contact the back ends that are hosted in standard West because those that's the only place that this multi-cluster service is exported from. Okay, and lastly, I want to show you the gateway configuration. Um, here we go. Let me uh, clear this out first. There we go. Okay, so this is what a gateway API HTTP route looks like. And this is one of the Kubernetes objects you need to configure uh, for your multi-cluster load balancer for the gateway API. So this HTTP route object is what uh, is storing what incoming requests we are looking for and where we should route them in our multi-cluster topology. So uh, a couple places where that config is set, but we can see uh, most clearly here, we're matching against the host name store.example.com. And also if we uh, kind of drop down here to this matches clause in the forward to the incoming request we're matching is anything that's prefixed by this forward slash. So basically any URI that we go to within the store.example.com domain. And what we're forwarding to, if we look in this backend ref uh, clause here, we're forwarding to a service import. So we're not forwarding to a service, we're forwarding to the service import. And that's how we're telling Gateway API to load balance against the whole multi-cluster service called front end, not just a certain service named front end in one single cluster. So this means that a request to our multi-cluster gateway configured load balancer 
using the hostname store.example.com and any URI in that domain will be routed to any of the front end workloads exported across the cluster set. Okay, so the last bit uh, to see here, I'm gonna go back to uh, here, is to actually see it. So I messed with my host file uh, so that we can actually see it uh, for real. Uh, the um, walkthrough as written has you curl from some different places, but I'm going to uh, show us this um, this way instead. So I'm going to go to store.example.com, which again, my, I set up my host file to route to the uh, external IP of this load balancer. And if we actually scroll down here, you'll see that this is a uh, uh, this implementation of online boutique has some extra information here of what cluster we're actually in right now, what front end is responding basically. Okay, so let's click through a bit and feel the rush of using an application that is spread across three different clusters. So again, I'm routed to a certain cluster's front end, standard west, um, if, uh, but all the services that it needs to contact. Uh, for example, the product catalog service to actually render all these product catalogs, that's uh, local to the middleware service uh, for this cluster, or um, this uh, you may also like is the recommendation engine service. So contacting that is also local to the cluster because that's part of our middleware service. But if we use our cart, so I'm going to add to cart, you'll see that we have some state here in our cart. Don't know if you felt it as as great as I just did, but that got routed to our multi-cluster service only in um, standard West. So in this case, I happen to be using the standard West front end. So I'm kind of already local to the cluster, but let me do one more edit to uh, make that even more exciting back to my terminal. So I'm going to delete my, de my front end deployment from standard West. So there won't be a front end there anymore for my multi-cluster multi gateway to route me to. So I'm going to reload my page here. You'll see that now my front end is reporting that I'm actually contacting Auto Central. But look, my cart is still there, right? So I'm still using that one stateful service exported from Standard West. That's the only place that it was deployed, right? Um, even though my front end is uh, from a different place, from Auto East. So I can click here, I can keep adding stuff to my cart. We could buy a hair dryer um, or anything that we want, right? And we're actually um, from our Auto Central front end, going through our middleware services local to that cluster, but then anytime we use our cart service, actually contacting that service using multi-cluster services from our standard West cluster. All right, so that's it for this one. Application segmentation with multi-cluster services and with multi-cluster gateway. Uh, hope you enjoyed all of these videos about the MCS API. I had a really good time making them for you. And thank you for joining me for Learn Kubernetes with Google.